this modeling concepts and its application in HTA, right? You must be uh, few of you may be aware, few of you may not be aware. But these are very simple things. But though it looks simple, it's not as such that simple. The thing is that we should know the basics basically. Once we know the basics, then we can uh, uh, this, uh, learn the techniques by our own. There are so many literature is available. YouTube videos are there, books are, are, are also there. Only thing is needed is your own internal motivation, right? So I am not going to cover each and every aspects in detail. However, I will just uh, sensitize you and would like to motivate you so that you can uh, build your own interest and you can trouble us also, no problem. We, can, we will come here for taking some lectures or workshop also, right? If you are really interested in upcoming times. So the content of my talk will be, I will just focus on what is economic evaluation, what is basically a model, right? Then comes about decision analysis steps to decision analysis questions and its limitations, concepts of the Markov models, Markovian assumptions, components of the model and its steps and then dynamic modeling concepts and its application also. Okay, coming to the economic evaluation. If we this, see this term, you can see here, there is a dollar sign, it is a cost. And here, here are the consequences, like means outcomes in terms of life here gain, then uh, uh, qualities, right? So it's, we need to, in ultimate end is to have a balance totally, right? So in economic evaluation studies, it refers to the study that considers both the comparative cost, means of different kind of intervention, hmm? and with the provision of the healthcare interventions and the, and the comparative clinical effects measured either in clinical units or in health preferences or in the different kind of monetary benefits. Okay, so what is model? It's a, uh, it's a mathematical structure that represents the health and economic outcomes of patients or in a, a population. So it, it also gives a limited information, uh, most of the time it gives information uh, regarding the synthesis by synthesis of the data, a consideration of all relevant comparators, and uh, at that time we need to also think about the, how, what the time horizon it should have. And there is again we need to handle the different kind of uncertainties because they are very much essential and so that we can get a uh, miss uh, this economic uh, outcomes in terms of this uh, after completing the study you can see one model here so one peculiarity is that it it uh, the modeling concept our model it should not delete the important things that we should present so here only face is in form only, right? But we don't know about the rest of the body. Here, this model should not have too much unwanted details as to complicate the understand. So how the model it should be? It should be created by art and balance between the strength and the weaknesses that is always there in the science. How this balance can be there is art and science. So at the center, so to know when we are going towards the truth, we need to simulate the data because there are different kind of probabilities than uh, by doing sensitivity an analysis, different kind of simulation, we try to go uh, very near to the truth. So these things are very, very important in uh, construction of the model. So what is a good model? Basically, the good model is to find an acceptable or the optimum solutions to a problem one must first know what is the problem is. That is most important. So the tendency is nearly always to simulate too much details rather than little. Thus one should always design the model around the questions to be answered rather than imitate the real system exactly. Now concept come up for the simulation. Simulation basically is the process of designing a computerized model of a system or process and conducting experiments with this model for the purpose either of understanding the behavior of the system or and the evaluating the various strategies for the operation of that system. I will be explaining in very short about the different kinds of model. The most simple model uh, basically is the decision tree analysis, right? So in decision tree analysis, basically it's a 
systematic approach to decision making under condition of the uncertainty. So it includes that uh, if we know future events with certainty, then we can use such this decision tree. So, it, uh, so not to use it if no information about the occurrence of the future events is there. That here, in the scale, there is a choice A and a choice B. So both these different choices, they have both risk and have benefits and we need to measure it, okay. So how, now in decision tree, the, at every time, the, suppose this is a choice A, so we need to, both the outcomes for the choice A and also for the choice B. So that outcomes, it can be a life year gain or the cost or the, of the colleagues, right? Different way. So here, by the decision analysis, uh, it predicts the consequences or the outcome of each option. It assesses the probability of an identified possible outcomes. It also identifies the availability options when faced with the decision and it, it also determines the value of each outcome and it, it also selects the decision that will yield the best payoff for whatever decision we took. So here, uh, like the component of the decision tree that includes this uh, decision node. Now here one example is given whether to operate or do not operate, right? So here, this uh, only two only two choices are shown here, but there could be more than two choices also. So these events basically, there are two different types of events. One is a mutually exclusive, means either this or that, totally. And second event is called collectively exhaustive. So you can here see some overlapping area also. So uh, in this chance mode, uh, this uh, chance, it determines which outcome will occur. So here the disease is present and this is absent. So that chances for that we need to know the probabilities of uh, have for occurring that events. So only two outcome has been shown here, but it can have more as long as they are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. Then here is one, uh, at the end there are terminal nodes. So the terminal nodes, the nodes that do not split are called leaf or the terminal nodes. So here, the outcome basically we used to measure in terms of the cost or in terms of this uh, college also. So some measures of value of worth needs to be applied to the terminal nodes are life years, gain or loss, the, the colleague gain or loss, or the cost incurred. Steps in decision analysis model. So first, identify the decision, then we need to structure the decision then we need to specify the consequences and the probabilities. And then we need to determine the outcomes. And then we need to select the best option. So just I will give one example here so that it will be easier for you to just understand the things. Now here uh, the decision is, uh, is there whether to operate on such suppose XYZ problem or not to operate. So then there are chances that if we do the operation, still the disease will be there, or chances that there will not be a disease. But suppose if there is a disease is still there, so there is no cure, and that uh, disease will be remain as it is, or there will be cure. So here the P is the probability, right? So here probability is 0 0.10, and here probability is 0. 9. So, so if we just uh, have the summation, so total probability will be the 1. So always see that your probability, it should be 1. So in that way to uh, do not operate and to operate. So there is a long different uh, path is there totally like this is present, this is absent. Then try for the cure or you, that uh, the patient may have palliative care or he will also uh, survive. So. So in that way, so all these probabilities are mentioned here and outcome is mentioned in terms of the life year. Okay, so here is life year 20, 20 and two, right? So now how to just uh, add all those things, right? So there is a concept called folding back uh, concepts, okay. If here is a cure, okay. So we, know, we want to know the how much life year is there here when this kind of decision is there. No, the chance are there. So 0 0.10 multiplied by 20 plus 0 0.90 multiplied by 2. So it's some as 3.8. 
for this chance, so this uh, total life years will be 3.8. So in the same way, we have to calculate everything. It's come 3.8, 20, then 16, 3.7, and ultimately, do not operate. It will have a life year of 18.38, and operate, if we take such a decision, then life year is 19.38. And so here we can see little, if we operate the little, there is a gain of the uh, life year. So which decision we can take? we can uh, decide as per this. But at the same time, we also need to know the cost also incurred. Hmm? And then by knowing the ICER, we can decide. So I'm not going to touch all those aspects in details, but uh, if you are interested, you can just go and see the meaning of the incremental cost effectiveness ratio. Hmm? It's uh, basically a difference between the cost, means the intervention and the comparator cost divided by the difference in the outcome. So again, there is one concept called the path probabilities, basically. So here, this different kind of this uh, red color, then green color, and this is a uh, pink color. So all these paths calculation is mentioned here. One example is different given like the use for the arthritis if, uh, if you took a decision of giving the naproxen uh, versus the coxib, right? So here, if we uh, just, uh, Give this path, so, so it will uh, come to this uh, 471 dollars. So the same concepts we can apply, and uh, as per that, we can take the decisions. So the question to consider after the analysis, it is the, are the result valid? So why it is important? Because where all the realistic strategies were compared, really we have compared it, or relevant outcomes we have considered and what are the probabilities. So these are the questions we should always keep in mind. What are the results? So the strategy results in a clinically important gain, how strong is the evidence change in the result due to the uncertainty in the evidence? So these are the important things. And also, can these results be applied to the patient or the population, which are of my interest? So do the probabilities, because again, the concept is that we should know the cost and the these uh, epidemiological parameters in terms of the uh, for calculating the probabilities, it should be from the local population. We should not use directly the cost in the US and UK to the Indian population. At the same time, epidemiological data should be for that uh, local geographical area. So that is the main challenge in India to know the, the quality of life, means uh, utility parameters for the Indian population, for the various diseases, and even to the even if we are there, this is a different kind of health stages of that diseases that we need to build together for all our nation. Because in India, we know that uh, it's a country within country. Every state is uh, having its uh, different health uh, profile. So there is a lot of heterogeneity. So local geographical data need to be there. So keep in mind that uh, if you are taking a, are you uh, doing a decision to uh, for decision tree analysis. So keep in mind that the power of the decision analysis is not in the numbers of the decision node. However, it's the ability to change the utilities and the probabilities. There are software also misused, uh, like super tree, small trees, uh, then tree age. However, the important thing is that these, you don't know what is actually going on. So most of the time, the researchers, they used to prefer the excels because they know what they are doing and what are the results. So limitations of this uh, decision tree is that uh, conclusion based on the assumptions hence need sensitivity analysis. So inclusion of these minor variables uh, when not based around the authentic data, it may result in the inaccurate results. Then again, uh, this can the events recur, right? These are the few limitations, okay. And then when, when does the event recur? And what is the average time of occurrence of the events in the model? So you must have seen this uh, person anytime. Who is this person? He's a famous R Russian mathematician. His name is uh, Andrey Markov. He's a Markov model, Markov assumptions, right? Because all like, aaj barish hogi, nahi hogi, ye kon batayega, IMD. So yes, sir, these are the basically concept of this Markov he has uh, given. And this uh, description of this, the present state fully captures all the information that could influence the future evolution of the process. So these are the things. So recursive model allowing moments back and forth between the points in a, a model, right? So it is used to examine scenarios that involves transition various state of, means uh, various hill stages, right? 
and this uh, consists of the hill stage, then transition probabilities and the cycle lengths. And these are the important things uh, whenever we do the Markov modeling. Okay. So this, there are Markovian assumptions are there. So at any given time, all patients must be in a one of the mutually exclusive state and collectively exhaustive state. One state to the other at each cycle in which time is divided in no cycle. So there are Markovian cycles are there and when there's a fixed duration, we also know the cycle length. Because this each and every term means I, there is no time in uh, just to explain you, but just come to know that there are certain, these are the things, right? So the transition probabilities that we need, we usually calculate by knowing the incidence of the disease or what is the prevalence, right? Then if you can see of this, suppose there is a vaccine. So one example I have tried to show is about this, uh, the different kind of hill stages, how these are, uh, people, they move from one hill stage to the another, right? What are the probabilities? So that depends upon the and this uh, epidemiological echo data. So the thing is that at the once the once the cohort it gets start. So at the end we should know means uh, this this uh, this cycle get get repeated till all the cohort is going to die. Not die means it's a uh, means on uh, like uh, by uh, doing the uh, simulations. So these are the different uh, components of this. Uh, Marco model, transitional probabilities, they used to come by the epidemiological data. We also need a cost, then quality of life. We should also you know, take the appropriate cycle length, and then we come to know the health outcomes, and then cost, and then we can measure the ICERs. So uh, these are the different important things for this uh, research okay, modeling. Okay. So these are different steps of these echo, echo models for this Marco model, and then last comes this uh, about this uh, dynamic models. These are very little bit complicated, but very few people they used to do because a lot of transitional properties they are required here. So just few example means I would like to inform about this. This is a Markov model. Again, there are so many hill stages are there. And if you see the dynamic model, uh, there are also so many uh, hill uh, stages are there and this uh, probabilities. Thank you.